So what if I told you that there is a fifth iPhone 12 in the works that's actually cheaper, but there's a catch? Because yes, it looks like there's one more iPhone that we didn't know about in the pipeline. We have some leaked specifications of the Google Pixel 5 and it still doesn't look like a flagship, but it doesn't look cheap either. And Xiaomi had a very interesting event for their 10th anniversary, interesting to say the least. I'm Jaime Rivera, and I'm going to institute the phrase never judge a phone by its leaks because the Pixel 4a is here and it's it's actually not ugly. I was wrong. This is Pocket Owl Daily sponsored by MediaTek. Stick around to learn why you should pick MediaTek for your next purchase. The official news today begin with deals and they're actually quite compelling depending on the retailer that you're considering. For example, if you're looking for a laptop, the 13 inch MacBook Pro is getting discounts on both Amazon and B&H. B&H currently has the Intel Core i5, 16 gigs of RAM and 512 gigs of storage variant for $200 off. That leaves it at 1600. Now, if you want more storage, Amazon has that same $200 discount for the one terabyte variant, leaving it at $1,800 shipped. The Galaxy Tab S6 Lite is also $50 off in both places. That leaves it at $300 shipped. Then we've got more deals on JPL speakers, earbuds, and more in the links of the description. Now, keeping on with official news, let's talk about Microsoft and the Xbox Series X, actually. Recently, the company said that we should expect this console for the holidays, but now we have somewhat of a more accurate date. They just announced that we'll be getting the new console in November, but they didn't provide a specific date. However, rumors do hint that it's gonna be available on the first week of November, unless we get some more delays due to the pandemic. If you're planning on buying it, Microsoft claims that there will be 100 titles optimized for the Series X once it launches and the uh, world well, obviously there are also the rumors of the more affordable Series S making the cut but yeah that's pure speculation we'll keep you posted now we did do a full pocket out daily the day of Galaxy Unpacked after the video that we had already done because we knew there was one more thing that was the Galaxy Z Fold 2 which I was not expecting to be as hot as it is and then it got announced then uh, I'm gonna reserve my you know opinions on the presentation. I'm just gonna say that regardless of how it was shown off, I do think that there's a lot to like about this phone. Now, here's the thing, they weren't really explicit on specifications and differences, but uh, well, apparently we're getting more information on September 1st. Now, probably the biggest upgrade is obviously the outer display, and now some new images from Korea show us how much of an upgrade it really is. The new images show us a side-by-side -side comparison of display real estate with the original Fold. The original outer display was a meager 4.6 inches and a very odd aspect ratio, and the new one is a massive 6.2 inch upgrade. The main display also grew from 7.2 three inches to 7.6 inches, getting rid of the notch. And it also got thinner when closed by a couple of millimeters on each side. Now, I still wish it were water resistant. Again, we don't have specs yet, but uh, God, I'm, I'm really compelled with this product now. Now let's talk for a second about Xiaomi because the company had their 10th anniversary event today. And let's just say it wasn't a way to celebrate itself. Or should I say it was because they kind of showcased every cool thing that they're doing. For starters, they just launched a full-blown Nightbot Lamborghini go-kart. Yeah, a go-kart. It will apparently sell in Malaysia and China for around $1,500, and it has some pretty impressive specifications when it comes to battery. Oddly, they're not launching this in Japan where there are Mario Kart races. But anyways, moving on, they launched a full-blown transparent TV. Yeah, I know, you heard that, right? It's called the Mi TV Lux OLED Transparent Edition because we love complicated names, right? It's a 55-inch OLED running at 120 hertz powered by a MediaTek 9650 chip. It'll cost you a cool $7,200, which is not bad if you consider that if you get a nano cell from LG, that's 5,000 bucks. And finally, they also launched the Mi 10 Ultra, which packs a 6.67 inch display running at 120 hertz. It's powered by a Qualcomm Snapdragon 865, along with a 4,500 milliamp hour battery, supports 120 watt charging. It also brings quad cameras in a 48 megapixel main sensor and up to 120X hybrid zoom, which we don't think will be amazing. Now, the interesting part is that this one will actually cost you just $760, a cool drop from the 1,000 bucks of the Mi 10. Uh, per, well, the original, so yeah, we'll, we'll see. We'll, we're getting it right now in a couple of days in August. And yes, I know it's been a week since the Pixel 4a got announced. Ever since then, I've had this phone waiting in customs here in Honduras. That's how bad the service is here. 
come on UPS, you guys could do a better job. I work there, I know. But anyways, it's here, but no, let's actually talk Pixel 5. Apparently it just went through benchmarks revealing some specifications. We've actually heard a lot of speculation of this not being a flagship and well, let's just say that's kind of the results, but not necessarily that bad. I mean, the benchmarks show that this phone will be powered by a mid-tier Snapdragon 765G. It'll pack eight gigs of RAM and while running Android 11. As for benchmarks, it scored lower than the 4 and 4XL due to the processor, but not by a significant margin, which is not bad. It's also expected to pack 6.67 inches on the display running at 120 hertz. And apparently we will be getting it in October along with the Pixel 4a 5G. Yeah, expect my 4A review coming soon. And folks, before we get to the hottest news, in addition to today's question, here's a word from today's sponsor, MediaTek. Did you know that its technology powers the popular Sony WF-1000X Mark III's? These were the first true wireless earbuds to feature true active noise cancellation. 24-bit audio signal processing also makes these one of my favorites for sound quality. We have a battery life of up to 24 hours with the carrying case and full integration at a tap with the Google Assistant and even Amazon's Alexa Assistant. Follow the first link in the description to find options on Amazon and follow the second one to learn why brands like Sony trust MediaTek. Thank you for sponsoring this video. And finally, the hottest news today have to do with the iPhone 12 and exactly how many variants we're getting. I mean, we've been covering that there's only going to be four, the smaller and larger iPhone 12, the smaller and larger iPhone 12 Pro. We did hear about the possibility of LTE variants, but then that was completely discarded. Bear with me. I mean, we even had Ming-Chi Kuo claiming that we will only be getting 5G, but if you think about it, it makes sense for there to be an LTE variant as not all markets are ready for 5G. Like why would you tax consumers with a more expensive iPhone and like Honduras, for example? Well, a new research note from Business Insider claims that we will be getting at least one LTE variant. Yes, one, and it'll actually be cheaper, but there's a catch. It won't happen this fall. See, according to them, we should expect multiple 5G iPhone 12s this year, but the cheaper LTE variant will get sort of like an iPhone SE treatment and we'll have to wait for it until February 2021. According to them, by cheaper, we're talking around $800, meaning it could actually be a pro variant. And apparently Apple wants to appeal to a broader market by making the price tags more aggressive during the recession. We're supposed to be getting four new iPhones this year, sometime in October or November, all of them being the 5G variant. But yeah, that should be the case. Let us know in the comments down below. What do you think? Do you think it's a good idea for Apple to, I don't know, hold back on, you know, the cheaper iPhone until later? Because in my case, I think it would be a bad idea, but that's just me. Leave us a comment down below. We'd love to know your opinion. Friends, again, if you want to get the news earlier, follow us on pocketnow.com and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this one. Also, follow us on social media as our extended coverage happens on Instagram. Follow me on my personal handles to see me learn to not judge phones by their leaks. Please give this video a thumbs up if you like what you saw. I'm Jaime Rivera. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.